You and I are looking for hope. We want to be able to experience in the midst of struggle, even despair, that Christ can come with life. Stay tuned. <music> Letitia, it's always good to be able to experience a young woman excited about the Lord, and perhaps as we watch and we listen to your story, we're going to be able to get a new fire in our own lives of what it means to give ourselves to the Lord Jesus Christ. Tell us a little bit about your love for Jesus. You, uh, you have a strong love for the Lord, is that true? I feel the Lord as my bridegroom. I, I feel very much romanced by Him. Romanced by Romanced him. Romanced by him. I, um, there was a time last summer especially where, where um, I was able to look at the world around me, especially nature, and I'd see flowers and I'd just be like, wow, that's a love letter from Christ. Really? Or I just, everything became almost like it was a glimpse of the Garden of Eden. Wow, this is it a strong thing. It was beautiful. Theme. It was so beautiful. I felt very much romanced. I always wanted to read, read Song of Solomon and, and um, I never thought that God was romantic, you mm -hmm. know, and us women always want to be wooed by our men and, and, and to know that God loves us that much. You mentioned the Song of Songs. That's a powerful, a powerful book in the Bible because yeah. it speaks of a, it doesn't necessarily even mention the name of God, but it is relating to God in a, in a very sensual way yeah. of a man and a woman loving each other in a deep way, and yet it's been included in the Bible as a way of saying, let's make sure that romance and the power of intimacy is very much a part of what it means to have a relationship with God. Sometimes we live in a world in, in which religion is kind of, oh, it's kind of nice, it's kind of on the outside, and it is something that we do on Sundays, and you try to live the good rule. Right. But it doesn't deal with emotions. You've experienced an emotional experience with Christ that's very, very strong. It's True? Very, yes, it's, it's intimate and it's, I never knew that that's what Christ was calling me to. Um, Christ before was somebody abstract and the fact that he wanted to lure me to him, to introduce me to him and, and, and where the word, I'd open up the word and it would just spring out at me. And everything I read, I believed. So all of a sudden in my life, I was just able to, to take the word and, and, and basically consume it and live it. Tell us a little bit about uh, your background of this. How did you get to this, this experience? You, you were raised in Sacramento? Um, I was raised in Portoville. I was born in Sacramento. Okay, born in there, yes. But um, you know what? Um, my life was, it was, a, was unfortunately some of um, what most Catholics go through is they go through the sacraments and they don't really have that experience of the Holy Spirit in their lives. It was just doing things just, because you had to do them. Because or... you had to do them, baptism, um, confirmation, and Holy Communion, and, and all of that. Um, but there came a time when um, after high school, I, I'd gone through like six years of depression, and I couldn't find myself, and I was making horrible decisions. And the person who I thought I was, I wasn't. I did not recognize myself in the mirror. You had an aspiration of being a, a, a big star in Hollywood, huh? I did. I, I came here to LA um, thinking that that's exactly what I was going to be doing. And um, I knew that that was a gift. I, I knew that was a gift, but I, I was using it in the wrong way. The, not singing, the, singing, the singing and acting? Yes, the okay. singing and acting. Um, not too much acting, but more the singing. More the singing. So, yes. Yeah. So, you know, the world. It, um, it, um, it failed me because I knew that was the wrong way to go. You've got to go through a whole bunch of auditions and struggles, don't you, in order to try to, to make it big and you can get a lot of rejection. Definitely, and I was having to sing words that I knew weren't right. I was having to dress in ways that I knew wasn't right. And in my gut, I, always, I just always knew it, even though I hadn't claimed Christ yet. So, something was still wrong. Something was very much going wrong, and I just, bad decision after bad decision, and I was at the pit of despair, like Psalms 39 says, and 
the Lord pick me up out of the pit, in a pit of despair and basically lured me into the Holy Land. How did this happen? It lured you to the Holy Land. I know, I know. From Los Angeles to the Holy (laughs) Land. How did you do that? Um, That happened. I was listening to Catholic radio. And Rosalind Moss, who was a speaker, I I just, I love hearing her radio show. And um, she um, invited everybody to um, come to the Holy Land. And so I ended up, I called, and um, the person on the other line was, was like, you need to go. And I was like, me? Like, yes, we only have two spots. It doesn't really matter who shows up, you know. We don't really need to fill the spots, but you need to go. So, and that was the first beckoning of the Holy Spirit that I started to understand. And I was like, wow, that, there's something there. I got to go. And my living situation was horrible. My working situation was horrible. I didn't have any money. Didn't know how I was going to get there. And my mom, I called my mom, and I was just no hope. I was extremely depressed. And, and she goes, mija, she goes, you need to go. And I'm going to give you the money to go. Hello. I know. <laughs> I got off the phone and I was just, that was the first time that I had really sincerely prayed to God. And I was just like, God, if you exist, you need to prove it to me on this trip. And if you prove it to me, I will give you my life. But th- you, have, you have this, you know, week. <laughs> so I end up going and... It was just the most beautiful week of my life. I, when I first got there, I just had this urgency to confess because I felt dirty. I had six years of sin. I hadn't gone to confession in a long time. And, and so when I confessed, I felt the supernatural power of God. And this grace poured into my body and my sin just left me and I felt like a feather. Wow. And see, my name, Letty, means joy. Mm. But I wasn't joyful, so I just felt like this walking contradiction. But after that happened, I was joyful again, and just I teared up, and I I knew at that moment that I had all access to to God's grace that week, and I was just going to pour myself into this. I we went to mass at the most holy places. They where, let me for example, sing where, where, where? at the Holy Sepulchre. They let me oh. sing on the Mount of Beatitudes, on the Via Dolorosa. We were holding the cross, and I was in the front, leading everybody in prayer and and song. And people would come up to me afterwards, and they would say, you know, you need to give your gift to God. And wow, that was a concept, <laughs> right? He gave it to me. I should give it back to him. So. Um, I didn't think of it much and more until I got back home, but when I did get back into the States, I knew my life was for God. And I, um, at the time I was teaching, so I had the whole summer off. I was in Mass every day. I mean, you can, I'm not a morning person, you cannot get me to get up at <laughs> 6 o'clock in the morning. And I was getting up at 6 o'clock in the morning to be in Mass, that's all I could think about. And then after, I would just spend hours and hours in adoration, just letting and receiving God. And it was the most profound experience of my life. I felt like I was in a bubble and just constantly romanced in everything that I saw. Every conversation that I had began and ended with Jesus. You know, it's like I couldn't get enough of him. And um, he purified me because he ended up putting me in the hands of of a beautiful, beautiful uh, servant of God, Barbara Ann Evans. And... um, she, she took me in because when I came home, my whole living situation was rearranged. I didn't have a place to live, any of that. So she took me in and um, built up my God esteem. And what do you mean your God esteem? Well, I don't believe in self-esteem. I believe in a God esteem mm-hmm. because we are children of God and we are nothing without God. So if you don't know who you are in God, then, then um, we're very poor. And knowing who you are in God means that you believe that God loves you. Yes. Profoundly. Profoundly. In a way that is not able to be laughed at or misunderstood, it's in your heart and it's real. Yes. That God looks at Letty and says, I really love you. And you say, yes, I accept that. Yes, (laughs) right. And there are people who have told me that before God loves you and I'd be like, okay, sure, you know. Yes, 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 yes. But when it becomes real, it's profound and it's and it's overwhelming. Letty, we're gonna we're gonna break for just a moment. I'm, I've got a, something else that I want to say to say to the people. Then I want to come back. Okay. But I want to know um, I want to know how you're gonna be able to carry this through. It sounds like it's a little bit 
up in the clouds <laughs> right. to be able to get down on your feet and make, make sure that this experience of Jesus and this romance that Jesus has given you is something that is going to be now concretely able to reach out into the lives of people yes. and serve them in a neat way. You stay tuned. We're going to come back and we're going to see what, what Lydia is doing <laughs> with her life now after she's been romanced by the Lord. Letty, you're giving us a beautiful example of a young woman uh, filled with all kind of the, the worldly desires that, that perpetuate what we see on, yeah. on MTV and so much of young people, you know, wanting to have something. And yet when it isn't centered on God, it can become a very, very shallow experience. Very shallow experience. But then something can happen if you're open to it, no matter how, how old you are. God can enter your life and embrace you and give you the confidence and peace you're looking for and the strength right. to start to move with those talents and gifts in a good way. Now, you, um, you have a talent for singing and we're going to be able to hear some of that beautiful yeah. singing. You, um, you have an experience now of God that has really kind of turned you upside down, hasn't it? Right. It has turned my whole world upside, upside down. down. And my family too. Yeah. There's kind of like a euphoria though and it's it's kind of up here. Is there, is there a coming down to earth a little bit more that we could say, hmm, that's awfully, that's awfully heavenly. What about <laughs> getting, getting our feet on the ground? Are there problems that you started to experience in terms of now making this something that you'd integrate into your life? Right. Well, that was the honeymoon period. Okay. <laughs> that's how I'd like to call it. But um, um, now that I know what my ministry is, um, there are Def definitely different problems I have to deal with and, and bringing it into the real world because yeah. there I was I was really being purified and I was by myself I was away pretty much from the world because I didn't listen to tell I didn't watch television or the radio and it was very much purified and then little by little I was brought into the world and I had to deal with uh, basically see, the different um, shows that were on see, TV and the bread, radio. Bread on the table, <laughs> uh, a right. roof under right. a job all and well. all those things that are, that, right. are, that are part of what life is about. What yeah. happened? Tell me, how, how, how did you start to wrestle with all this? Um, I had a job um, where I was an educational consultant and um, although I loved what I was doing, I had to deal with people in the school district quite a bit. And, um, and so making sure that I was prayed up before I went there and, and trying to figure out how I was supposed to evangelize and, and this mission that God was calling me to. Because so it's not just a matter a of you experiencing it, but now you've got to, as all Christians have to do, you've got to be able to share this with other people. You have to share it with other people. So you've got to be careful with this too right. because you're dealing with people that might just kind of throw you out and say, oh, no. And in an area where you're not supposed to say God's name. Yes, yes, yes. You know, yes, so yes. I, would, I would make sure and wear like a big crucifix or I would try to put God's name anywhere that I could um, because I really wanted to fulfill that radical call, you know, of, of evangelism that we're all called to. And, um, but was, the it, Lord, was it easy? No. It no. was not easy. You have to be very much in, in prayer and um, hearing the Holy Spirit and what He has to tell you in order for you to do God's work because otherwise it's so difficult. What, was it, what were some of the difficulties you ran into? Um, I mostly ran into the difficulties of hearing God's voice because I, with radio and with, with television, different noise that was around me, yeah. I really had to center myself in order to figure out what it was that God was calling me to. and. Um, and boy, we live in a world in which the message that's coming from radio and television can very easily pull us away from the real message of what Christ is calling it's us to. It's so isn't clever it? and it's so Because there's tricky. a whole lot about sensuality, there's a whole lot, lot about power, there's a whole lot about wealth, uh, a whole thing that can very easily move us away from the message of Jesus. And hi, how do you, how do you do it? How do you do it? You pray? You pray. You pray? And then you try with great courage, I would imagine, to... You pray and then you act, yes. Yeah, you, so you sometimes it's, it's, you just have to step though, forward. It's courageous, though, isn't it? It's not easy, isn't it? No, it, it is not easy. It oh is not boy. easy. Yeah. But with the grace of God, all is possible. So what are you doing now? What's going on in your life now? Um, well, since the Lord give, has given me the gift of song, I am doing ministry full-time. I... Um, I'm over at St. Anne's in Puerto Rico, and I do music ministry and youth ministry. It's in there. Southern California here. In Southern, oh, it's it's actually in Northern, in in Central California. Okay, okay. And um, and then wherever God calls me to do music ministry, <clears throat> excuse me, I am available, and um, He has called me to evangelize and to 
do ministry full time through song. Wow, that's powerful. And he's he's called me to create um, an, a ministry called Holy Ambition Ministries. Holy Ambition. And it's it's for the youth, and it's to help cultivate their talents for God in order for them to evangelize. How do you convince a young person that perhaps is where you used to be? How do you convince them to be able to say that there's something more in their life? I'm 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 not I'm not this old man sitting in front of you. But let's say that I'm a I'm a a 20 year old, you know, and I'm concerned about my job, and I'm concerned about sex, and I'm concerned about sports, and all this other stuff, and that's the that's the main thing in my life. How do you get Jesus into this, in, into my life? What, what would you say to me? You know, a lot of times I really try and get to the core of, and I help them understand where God is in their life right now. And because some people, a lot of people don't believe in God. Yeah, and there's a lot that don't believe in God. There's a lot that don't believe in God. And so I'll bring out the virtues, how they, what they see in people. And then I'll say, well, that came from God. You know, um, they, they believe in fairness. They believe in justice. All this comes from God. And so when they understand the root, I tell them to just dive into it, to see to, to every question that they have, to get an answer to it, because it will lead to God. And just to continue, continually ask questions. And if I can, I pray with them. And sometimes the power of the Holy Spirit is so strong that they feel that. And they see love. They see love through me, and they see service through me. So I definitely have to walk with Christ in order for that to happen. One of the, so. the uh, parables of Jesus that I find fascinating, and, it, it, and it's in, in three of the Gospels, is the, is the story of the seeds, of the farmer that goes out and throws seeds. Uh, and I think it's a, it's a story that speaks of the challenge that we have of being willing continually to try to spread the good news, just like those seeds, and the challenge of this experience of Jesus that you have. But the problem is that some of it falls on, on rocky ground, some of it falls on thorns, right. some, of, some of it falls on a, on a path where everybody steps on it. And it's only one out of the four that works. Right. <laughs> and sometimes I think we need to be aware of that with our with this experience of Jesus that we share and this desire to be able to bring it to others, that it isn't always going to be successful. <laughs> but, but he does promise us that if the one out of the four works, that that can multiply 30, 60, and even 100 fold to bringing about great blessings in God's life. So right. the, the sustenance of that love of God is the source that allows us to be able to sometimes keep on going with doing a television program, singing songs, right. going out and sharing with other people. You know? And I found because of my, my personal experience, I mean, there's nothing they can say to that. When I say, well, I've experienced God, I've experienced God's love, you know, and, and I've been given this music, and, you know, they can't say anything about that. They're just, they wonder. I mean, there have been many people in my family and friends who have converted because of that. Family is oftentimes the most difficult of a, if, if there's an experience of Jesus that you've had that's kind of turned everything around, yeah. um, convey, conveying that to your to your brothers and sisters and to your mom and dad and to the uncles and others oftentimes is the most difficult, isn't it? You know what? For me, it's been the opposite. Oh, good. Praise good. God, because when they saw my radical conversion, they couldn't explain it. And they had a very um, lukewarm faith, um, or they went... Um, once a month, you know, just different people in my family. And all of a sudden, when they saw this radical change with me, they just started wanting to go to Mass more. Really? I mean, my, my dad's reading all this, you know, uh, the, the, all these theology books, and, and my mother, I mean, she's always going to daily Mass, but she's starting to understand more the supernatural part of God, you know, that he, it's an intimacy, that there's, there's gifts, there's charisms he wants to give us. And um, my sisters, just all of them, we've had... An amazing experience, and I just I'm extremely thankful because I know it's it's usually where it's most difficult with the families, and it hasn't been that way with me. Lydia, would would you talk to the camera right over here? There's, um, let's believe that there's a bunch of young people right there that are just sitting there, looking at you right now, really doubting the presence of God, maybe overwhelmed with what the world is saying in terms of this is what happiness is all about. Could you tell them right now, just talk to the people right there. They're right there, just, just talk right, right to that camera and just tell them what, you, what you'd like to say. The world wants you to think that that is what is exciting. 
but I've never experienced something more exciting than an intimate relationship with Christ. The love, the supernatural love that you feel, that, that pit, that, that feeling, that hunger that we have in the pit of our stomachs can only be filled by Christ. And you can try absolutely everything, and I tried so many of those things, but they are all empty. In the end, the only thing that there is, the only person that there is, is Jesus Christ. And I just, I pray, and I, I beg you to just turn to him, because it's wasted time when you don't. So. God bless. Thanks. I think we're going to come back in just a moment. We're going to bring in some, uh, I'll, I'll lay some of the letters that have been written into us from the many people that are watching the show, and we'll pray. Stay tuned. We're going to do some praying for you. Letty, one of the, one of the joys of television is um, being able to talk to a lot of people, sometimes because of television's impersonal nature. You just throw things out and you never hear back. But look at this. We, we get letters from people all over the country and all over the world. Just got a beautiful letter from uh, someone from Kenya, oh. uh, the, the, then watching the show over in Africa, you know, watching the oh, show wow. and that and the things. We go into Europe also and that. Now, um, it's really important that people share your, your needs and to believe that we here at the ministry are praying for you and believing that God is going to work miracles in your life. One of the things that's also exciting is the um, ability through the internet to not only write an email, and they can do that, but they can also uh, get in touch with a daily message that I give on YouTube. Oh boy, I'm giving a little thing. I'm trying to do that every day <laughs> on YouTube. So um, how about we pray, l listen to some of these needs. Um, Tamika is, is concerned about her children uh, and very much concerned that maybe um, they might even be ministers. Um, praying, David is praying for his wife, Lisa, who suffers from depression. And um, he's left with three small children, and it's really tough you oh, know, wow. to do those kind of things. I'm begging for prayers towards complete emotional, spiritual healing for my son and the solution to his problems. Oh, boy, you know, this is from Virginia. And over here we have some uh, again, severe, severe depression, sadness, and fear. Depression is a big thing. You talked yes. about that in your own life. Yes, you know? and it was only God who took me out of the depression. To be able to know that God loves you. To know that God is loves the you. foundation of opening that doors. Let's lay our hands right here on these things. Lord, we believe that you're a God of miracles. Enter into the lives of these people that we love with your healing. Thank you, Lord. And may Jesus love for you always. Make you smile. Thanks, Liddy. God bless you. Good job. Shoot. Watching you see, Lord, we will abide, Lord, gathering the nets right in, in your love. In your love. In your love. In your love. Gathering them in, Lord, we will be fishers of men in your love, in your love, in your love, in your love. Holy ambition can Can you see? 